Hank Greenberg, nicknamed Hammer and Hank, is considered to be one of the greatest sluggers in baseball history. He spent most of his career playing for the Detroit Tigers in the 1930s and 1940s. Below are his home run totals for each season he played. Construct the box and whisker plot. So in constructing a box and whisker plot, the first thing you must absolutely do is make sure your data is in order. So before we even do anything, I need to make sure all this is in order. And as you can see, it's not. So let's go through and put this in numerical order. So 0, 1, 2, we got a 12, 13, I guess you see a 25, then 26, we have a 33, 36, 40, 41, 44, 58. Okay, so now that everything is in order, we can identify two parts of the box and whisker plot. The first part, which is zero, that's called the minimum value. It's the smallest one. And then 58 is called the maximum value. So a box and whisker plot is basically going to divide up the data in quarters. So we're looking for where do we separate 25% from the top 75%. 50% in the top 50, and then 75 in the top 25. So in other words, we're dividing it into quarters. So these are called quartiles. So we're going to be looking for quartile 1, so I'm going to call that Q1, and quartile 2, and then quartile 3. Q1 separates the bottom 25% from the top 75%. Q2 separates the bottom 50% from the top 50%. And Q3 separates the bottom 75% from the top 25%. So Q2, if you look at it, is just right in the middle because you're separating the bottom 50 from the top 50. So this is the same thing as the median. So we can easily identify that. So just starting on the outsides and working your way in. So 26 is going to be Q2. Okay, so to find Q1 and Q3, we want to go basically half between the minimum value and the median because that's going to separate 25% from 75%. So between the mi minimum and Q2, okay, so Q2 is 26, so that means I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers to the left. So what I'm going to do is find the median of these 6 numbers to the left. So working inwards. Q1 is going to be the average of 2 and 12. So that's going to be 2 plus 12 divided by 2, or 7. Okay, do the same thing for Q3. So Q2 is 26, so after that, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers. So taking the mean, or the median, is going to be Q3. So that's 40 plus 41 divided by 2, or 40.5. Okay, so these are all the numbers that we're going to plot. And the way we're going to do this is on a standard number line. We're going to start it at 0. We're going to end it at 58. So I'm just going to draw a number line. So starting at 0 and ending at 58. Okay, now what you want to do is keep your spacing consistent. So as you go through, everything needs to be correct. So this is, let's say it's about 60, so I'm going to go by maybe 10s. So halfway in between would be about 30. So then we got 10, we got 20, we got 40, then we got about 50. Okay, just trying to at least get the spacing accurate. Okay, so at 0, we have our minimum. At 58, we have our max. That's where we're stopping. Okay, Q1 is at 7. I'm going to mark out where 7 is. We use a different color, actually. Okay, 
26. It's Q2. And then 40.5 is Q3. So from these, we're going to form our box and whisker plot. So first of all, let's do the box. So connecting Q1 to Q2 to Q3. And then the whiskers are going to be from the minimum to Q1 and from Q3 to the max. So basically what this box plot is telling us is by this really long whisker on the right side here, that there's not many numbers that are between 40 and 58. So this variation is pretty large. Between 0 and 7, there's a few more numbers, so the variation is not as big. And so between the 7 and the 26, again, because that's kind of long, we have some variation in there. So basically, between 26 and 40.5 is where we're going to have most of our data. Because that's a little more compressed, so more data lies in between there.